Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Off the Fence with Finch. I'm Finch, the flyest and the comedic superhero with the flyest cape. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know who it is. And listen, I'm excited about tonight. Not because it's football night, but because it's Tuesday night. Now, what's the odds of football being on a Tuesday night? Nobody has ever heard of that, right? Well, we're sitting in some uncertain times. I didn't even drink any of my water. Hmm? Hey, make sure you go by the Off the Fence store. And pick up some of the merch. Uh, I think it's still 25% off, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, guys, listen, if you're just joining us and this is your first time tuning in, make sure you are subscribing to our YouTube. Click on the notification bell so that you are aware of when a new episode airs or when we post a new video so you're not out of the note. And you can go to IamHaroldFinch.com and pick up your latest merch. This hat is there. These shirts are here. I got a robe, but I, I didn't want to put it on tonight because, I mean, well, let me bring it out. Uh, you, you might as well see it. You might as well see it. Yeah, here it is right here. Uh, anyway, it, it's, it's a bunch of stuff. Don't don't worry about it. Just go get go shop to your heart's content. 25% off. Uh, use the code FINCH25 for 25% off so that you can uh, get your savings. Uh, listen, guys, my first guest is a certified fitness nutrition coach, entrepreneur, podcaster, and practitioner of mindfulness and meditation. I'm going to have to ask what that means. He's also the author of Formula 7, Seven Simple Principles for Phenomenal Health. And guess what, guys? He's in the fire side chat right now. Please welcome to Off the Fence, Dave Sherwin. Thank you, Finch. This is awesome. I've been looking forward to this interview. Hey, man, we've been looking forward to you coming on because I certainly want to hear about these seven steps, man. Well, I've been watching your show and I've got, I got to turn up my energy to keep up with you. OK, <laughs> like I do my own podcast and it's like we chat and it's, you know, we go over information for like 40 <laughs> minutes and I watch this show. I'm like, holy crap, I better turn up the volume because this guy's high energy. Uh, I'm hey, trying man. to keep up, man. You know, people watching from different coasts, you got to wake somebody up and somebody need to get their ass off the fence tonight. So why not? <laughs> I like it. I like your energy. I like the interviews. I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to have you, man. And um, I was reading some things about you. Uh, and what you do, and you have this funny word. I think it's, is it pronounced dirobi? It is pronounced dirobi. Okay. And it is a, a loosely translated from a Sanskrit word that means destroy your weakness. Destroy your weakness. Yeah. So if you are somebody with some health weaknesses, this system will help you destroy that. That's what we're all about. Okay. I see we both yeah. wore, wore hats tonight, huh? <laughs> I wear baseball hat a lot. I'm outside a lot. I mean, uh, uh, and, and so I, I often have a hat on. Yeah, I, I didn't. Deal. I didn't do nothing with my hat a day, so that's why I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it works for that too. Another good reason. <laughs> okay, so so the the Dairobi undiet. What yeah. is that? And how did you, you know come what? up with that? I started helping people in weight loss in 2009. And our diet became incredibly popular, faster than I ever imagined it would. And it wasn't the undiet back then. We're just helping people lose weight. I wasn't an expert in weight loss. And we launched this product uh, with just a little bit of research and some help from some friends of mine in the industry. And it took off faster and better than I ever thought it would. Mm. But what happened was that was a blessing and a curse because, first of all, I've never personally really had a struggle with weight loss. I've generally been a fit guy. I, I'm blessed to have genetics. I haven't dealt with it. And suddenly I was introduced to just how awful and painful it is for many people who, who just were brought up in a way that maybe they've been overweight since elementary school and it's been a lifelong struggle. It's painful. It's emotional. It's hard. And I was introduced to this and I started to realize, hey, this is, this is not just about selling someone a program. Mm -hmm to lose weight. That's wonderful. But how are they going to be in two years and five years and, and, and 10 years? And so the Dorobi Dero Undiet was an evolution over the last 11 years of how could we help people not only lose the weight right now, because when someone purchases a weight loss program or a product, their, um, their, their emotions are, are high, their, their, their motivation is high, they're ready mm. to do it. Problem is, 
three months from now, their motivation may be very low. They may be not following the principles they ought to be following. And so it was born from that. How do we create something long-term that people can do? Yeah, well, I mean, you said some things that I can relate to. Now, and listen, I, I got to say that I thought, OK, maybe he was big and now he's small. You know, I, I, I wasn't sure what the motivation was, but yeah. you're right. See, because I, I mean, I think a lot of people like myself are dealing with baby fat. Like I still got fat from when I was a baby. You know, mm. so I'm trying to get rid of this fat that's hovering around my my midsection, so to speak. And you're right. Some days I'm motivated. I get on my bike. I go 10 miles, 20 miles. Then some days, a couple months later, it's like, eh, you know, I ride tomorrow. Tomorrow turns into three months. That's where I'm sitting at now. Tomorrow has been about six, seven months. <laughs> OK. And, and so to address that, what we realize is to, to, to deal with the psychology of this, it's got to be dead simple. The, the Dirobian diet is literally seven things. And we just want people to just kind of print them out, put them on the fridge following the best they can because the law of easy things, I don't know if you ever heard the law of easy things, No, but easy things are easy to do and they're easy not to do. Ah. Okay. And so, but the law of hard things is hard things are hard to do. And so you probably won't do them long-term. <laughs> <Right? Yeah, right. laughs> so if we can get people to do easy things for long-term realizing there's no, no wagon to fall off of, there, there's no calorie counting. There's nothing very difficult. There's just these seven principle-based elements that all nutritionists would agree with, that if you just follow them, you don't have to calorie count. You don't have to worry about, is this too much carbs? Is this too much fat? Is it too much this? Is it too much that? It's just eating in a very sane and simple way. Okay. So what what's principle number one? Number one is stop drinking calories. Drink water. Okay. Okay. Now, 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 is that difficult for people to, to stop yeah, doing drinking calories? Yes and no. Depends on the person. For some people, this is very, very easy. Now, we don't make it a hard and fast rule. Like anything I'm about to tell you, this doesn't mean you can never have a drink of coffee in the morning and not have a beer on a Friday night. It's not about that. Okay. It's all about ratio. Most people have too much in the way of juices, Red Bulls, alcohol, and what we need to do is cut down on that and raise the amount of water that we, we take in. Now, if you're on a diet, I, I want you to be a little more firm. If you want to lose weight just for the next 60 days, commit to water. Why not? Maybe just cheat once or twice a week. But uh, generally speaking, again, it's, mm. it's a principle, not a rule. Try to cut down on calorie heavy drinks, including even fruit juice. Okay. And raise the amount of water. So, so how would someone go about knowing, because I myself don't look at labels, maybe I should, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm what I call a uh, growing vegan, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> because my weight is, is, has fluctuated since I became a vegan uh, two, two, three years ago now. And so looking at calories, you know, we, we look at some of the things that we, we don't really, well, most of us don't look at what we eat. We just eat. So how would yeah. you, what would you suggest someone do to look at the calories so they don't drink a lot of calories? Commit to water. Just commit to water. Commit to water. Get That's yourself a gut. decent bottle, right? Get yourself an insulated bottle, put cool, nice, refreshing, purified water in it and drink it as often as possible. Take it with you to meetings, take it with you to bed. You know, a lot of people wake up thirsty in the night. They went to bed dehydrated. They mm. wake up thirsty and they don't get a drink. I, I don't. If my bottle's not beside me, I'm not getting out of bed. Right. I'm going to go back to sleep and be thirsty. That's right. True. That's it's true. too much work. So take it to bed. Take it with you everywhere and just commit to water. Now, you can add things. There's a variety of things. You know, you'd be surprised how, how if you just add maybe some essential oils, lemon or grapefruit or mm. or um orange flavoring to it, how much better it tastes. Or there's some healthy energy drinks. Uh, okay. There are some zero calorie energy powders you could add if you want to pick me up in the afternoon. So it's not like you can't add anything. And so there's a lot of people just don't want to drink water all the time. And so that's why I tell them, well, just look for some low calorie alternatives or things you can add to your water. It's better than what most people are drinking. Right. Yeah. I started, I started 
last week adding lemon to my water. Now, water is the primary thing I drink. I don't drink juices nice. and all that kind of thing. I drink water yeah. every day. And I started adding lemon to my water in the morning. When I, As soon as I wake up in the morning, I have my 32-ounce thing of water like yours. And I put two lemons in it. And that's what I drink throughout the day. And then I, I, I kind of refill that. I, I try to drink at least three of those because yeah, I've perfect. learned I need to drink half my body weight. Right. Is that right? That's exactly what we teach. Half your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 75 ounces. But if you exercise, don't count that. So if you drank a whole bottle during your exercise, just, you know, that's just what you needed to get through your, your workout. And so. It's outside of exercise, half your body weight in ounces. Now, by the way, how much time have we got? Because I got six more, so I might need to go faster. All right, yeah, let's let's go. We, we, we got about uh, eight, to ten, eight to 10 minutes. Eight to 10 minutes, okay. Moving right. on to number two. Eat all your food slowly and mindfully. This is a really interesting thing, Finch. Most people don't understand that how you eat your food actually matters. Our stomach is not some hole at the bottom of our throat and there's some pipe that all the food drops in there, gets digested. It's, it's actually not? got folds. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a cave. It just drops in there, <laughs> all gets all churned up and then away it goes. Right? So our, our body needs to, from the teeth, work the enzymes into the food is okay. especially true for, for uh, carbs and, and uh, fats. Then it gets into our stomach and our stomach has folds and the food needs to be worked through those folds in a kind of slow, methodical way. And our body hormones that signal that we're full are a little behind. They're, they're, they don't work instantly. So if mm. we eat a ton of food really fast, then we might still be eating after our stomach is full because the fullness signals haven't hit our brain. So eating slowly and mindfully, believe it or not, is more important than what we eat. How we eat is more important than what we eat. So we need to eat slower so that the folds have an opportunity to hug the food that we're eating. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Chew it longer, better. Swallow it. Put down your utensil between bites. This is really easy for some people, very difficult for others. Some people are born slow eaters. It's not a problem. Like, oh, I already do that. Right. Wonderful. But the other thing is, Finch, we're in a very unmindful, distracted society. We talked about the mindfulness and meditation mm -hmm. earlier. We tend to multitask. There's no such thing as multitasking. There's only task switching, right? <laughs> if you're downing a burger and fries with one hand, you got your phone in the other hand and you're with some friends at the table, right? Right. It's not as good as just having the phone maybe upside down, chatting with your friends between bites, uh -huh. being mindful of the food you're eating and mindful of the people that you're with, right? So it's about being mindful and a little slower and a little more focused on each task that we're doing. All right, Dave, somebody says my foes are on the outside of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, follow along the other seven and maybe we'll be able to change that. All right. All right. So what's number three? <laughs> uh, number three is intermittent fasting. Now, you probably heard of intermittent fasting and maybe everyone listening has. And some people might think, oh, that sounds hard. Well, we actually try to pe get people to do it in a very simple way, Finch, and that is to simply eat in a reasonable eating window during the day. Now, for women, that should be never less, uh, never be less than 10 hours because of hormonal, hormonal issues. For men, it can be six to eight hours. But for both men and women, if you just kind of sleep and, and, and then wait a while before you eat, maybe after you exercise, mm -hmm. and then after dinner, don't eat anything. Now, you'll be amazed if that's all you do. If all you do is stop eating after dinner, first of all, your stomach has a chance to digest all the food. Okay. Your melatonin rises, your blood sugar drops, and then you sleep and you're in an ideal sleep. You're going to sleep better. Then you wake up in the morning, testosterone is high, estrogen is high, HGH is high, blood sugar is low. Perfect state for exercising. And then if you continue to not eat, your body stays in this optimal hormonal state. Your mind works better. You have no brain fog. You feel terrific. And then eat breakfast around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning if you can. And then eat your three meals or four, whatever works best for you. But after dinner, stop eating. One of the guests I had on my show, the great uh, strength trainer from Canada, Greg, uh, Craig Bonjoli, who's trained Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. so he teaches all his athletes this. He said to me, this is one of the best health tips I've heard in ages. He said, Dave, Nobody craves broccoli at eight o'clock at night. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Isn't that true? Right? That's true. 
So when you stop eating at dinner time, what is it you're not going to eat? You're not going to drink soda. You're going to cut out alcohol. You're going to cut out Cheetos, right? Nachos, right. all kinds of junk food. They got to cut out Cheetos day. <laughs> hey, eat them during your fasting window. Slowly. I mean, your eating window slowly and mindfully. I'm not saying you can't eat Cheetos. When you do eat them slowly and mindfully during your eating window. Now, now what time do you suggest people last meal happens in the, in this, in their day? Seven o'clock at the latest, 6 p.m. if you can. Okay. All right. I'm doing good. See, see, they, I already intermittent fasting every day now. I, I'm drinking a lot more water. Uh, I try to get, I try to do half my body weight daily. Sometimes I miss it. And uh, I'm going to bed earlier now. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's move on to the next thing then. And that is, what do you eat? Now, I'm a precision nutrition coach. That's my certification. And we teach the hand rules, right? Everyone has a hand that's in proportion to your body, right? If you're a smaller person, you have a smaller hand and so on. But if you look at your hand, if you eat pro uh, protein, now this is with each meal, try to eat protein the size of your palm, carbs okay. the size of your closed fist. Um, if you open your hand and were to put a small uh, serving of vegetables in there, that would be the vegetable portion. And then fats the size of your thumb, which is roughly two ounces most of the time. So okay. healthy fats like olive oil, avocado oil, uh, avocado uh, uh, itself, that type of thing. So eat according to the hand rules, or in other words, get a balance of healthy carbs, fats, protein, and some vegetables with each meal. Now, now, do you guys provide a good. list, Dave, of, 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 of different foods that people should or should not eat? Do you guys have a list? Yeah, we do. Um, if you go to dirobi.com, D-I-R-O-B-I.com, on the blog, we have many, many posts about this. If you Google something like Dirobi Undiet, tons of stuff will come up. I think one of them is called uh, How to Create the Perfect Meal. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, what's your next one? Uh, the next one is observe a simple supplement strategy. If you do all these things right, you'll still be deficient in some things. And we know that from science. And right. so take a good multi, take a good mineral supplement. Also, there's a variety of, of supplements other than that. For example, I, I talked about getting enough protein. That's one of the hard ones. It's hard to get quality protein with breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Adding in a high quality protein powder, not a bad idea. It's okay. better than having an all-carb meal, right? So- Figure out the supplements. Uh, you might want to work with a specialist on this. Some women need iron and, and and zinc. There's a lot of men who are deficient in vitamin D and and zinc and a variety of other things, right? That's so true. That's true. I, I actually do a nutritional blood panel once a year. I recommend you do that. It used to be very expensive, like five hundred dollars to send in and, and get a get lab work done. Okay. It's now about a hundred dollars. I think that's a wise investment if you were to just send in. Uh, often it's just a saliva and hair sample. Mm -hmm. You mail it in. They tell you what your deficiencies are. I highly recommend it. Some people might think that's a DNA test. They don't want to be the father, Dave. They don't want to be the father. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do the DNA. Just do your nutritionals. <laughs> okay. All right. So what's next? <laughs> Exercise every day. Now, this is, oh, this is for those over 30, especially, right? Now, okay. don't. Don't misunderstand. I'm not saying you have to get in your fancy gym clothes and go to the gym every single day. I'm saying be active every single day and work in a variety of things. Finch, as we get older, the fact is yeah. that if we don't stretch, if we don't work on our strength, if we don't work on mobility, we're going to lose it. And so by doing some simple exercise every day, that's how we keep our metabolism up. This is, it helps us sleep better. It helps us have more muscle. Mm -hmm. It helps us avoid disease over time. Let's try to do something daily. It used to be that they'd say, work out three times a week. You'll be healthy. Right. Uh, that's not going to cut it. Now, Dave, what are you like? Uh, 35, 26, something like that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm 54 with five grandkids. Stop that, man. You no <laughs> way you're 54. 54. That's why this stuff is so meaningful to me, right? Gotcha. Because I'm getting old enough to know, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I'm getting old. Look, Finch, not to be negative here, but I got high school buddies that have died already. Right. Okay. From preventable health mm -hmm. problems. And yeah. so this means more to me the more old, the older I get. Also, even during COVID, I, I mean, I'm getting my grandkids. I can't see them all the time, right. but I'll like 
call them on FaceTime and read them a book, right? Uh huh. And I love that. And whatever time I can spend with my grandkids is highly motivating and fulfilling for me. And I want to do it as long as I can. Right. And that's only going to come if I make these good decisions every single day. That's true. Now we're on tip. Which, which number are we on now? Uh, we are on seven. The last one, sleep. Get all seven right. to nine hours of sleep every single night. And that's where all this comes together. Mm. You, you've stopped eating. So your body gets to sleep and doesn't have to digest food. Right. It is processing all that good nutrition that you ate. It is working on rebuilding the muscle that you broke down if you lifted weights, right? right? So all this magic happens while you're sleeping. Unfortunately, we live in a country where people prize being go-getters, right? get stuff done, uh, burn the candle at both ends, <laughs> go to bed late, get up early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those days are over. Those days are over. You can do that on a weekend. You can do it now and then. But generally speaking, if you want to have good health for a long time, you got to get enough sleep every night. Yeah. And, and see, I think people think people have the mentality that if they don't stay up all night, they don't get it done. Somebody else is doing it. And you're right. You'll be dead. and You won't even enjoy all this hard work you, you tried to put in. Yeah, that's right. And, and it's an illusion, Finch. It's all an illusion. We tend to have a sense inside our brain that we got to be doing something. We right. got to get something done. And the fact is, half the time it's an illusion. If you get a call that one of your children has had an accident, mm -hmm. you will drop whatever you're doing right. and you'll go take care of that and life will go on just fine. And suddenly you find out that all that crap that you thought you had to knock off your to-do list was so vitally important. Right. That's true. Most That's of it's true. not. That's true. If, if you did the 20% of the most important stuff every day, we do just fine, generally speaking. Business speaking. All right, yeah. Dave, how can people connect with you if they want to connect to you after this program is over? Well, go to dirobi.com and check out our website. And on the homepage, you can actually book a 20 minute consultation with me. It's not some kind of a pitch. I love to do this. Our, our business is very successful. It's an e-commerce business and our product is selling every single day, whether I do anything or not. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to explain that if you'd like to spend 20 minutes with me, it's not gonna be a big pitch. I'd love to talk to any of you listening and spend the 20 minutes, just kind of go through these things, talk about your goals. And as a health coach, if I can help you out, I'd be very uh, fulfilling and fun for me. So you can do that. Also, I have my own podcast. As I mentioned at Dairobi, if you click on podcast, you can see all the interviews I've done with a lot of health experts, many with much more experienced PhDs and one of than I have myself, which is why I I love to do it. So lots of great information at our website. All right. We got a question here for you, Dave. Uh, can right. you be successful if you don't do all seven steps? You can actually make dramatic improvements with just one or two of these, depending on what your weaknesses are. And as a matter of fact, I love the question because when a person says, well, I can't do all seven right now, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to do three. I say, great. Because if all you're doing is going from, say you're at a level three in your health mm -hmm. and you use two of these to go to level four, guess what? That's wonderful. And from level four, you may have the vision to go to level five. So what I'd say to the person who asked the question is pick the ones that appeal to you. Maybe the ones that you think are overcoming your biggest weakness right? or maybe the ones that are easiest for you to do. However it works for you, absolutely pick one or two. You know, we all know ourselves, right. Finch. You know yourself. I Absolutely. know myself. We know our weaknesses. We know what we're likely to do or not do. Pick the ones you're likely to do. The law of easy things. Pick the ones that are easy to do. Pick the ones that are easy to do, ladies and gentlemen, and get your ass off the fence. Dave, thank you so much for joining us, man. I had a ball with you. We're going to have to have you back again soon, man. Thank you so much. This has been fun. Thank you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we have someone to help you with your skin health. Oh, God, you don't want to miss that. It's off the fence. I'm Fitch. We'll be right back. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like Down. Bust it. I have the radio on the telly. <laughs> 